Amazon may have invested billions into building its own satellite empire. But guess who might end up saving the day? Yep, SpaceX. With questionable choices in launch partners and resources spread a bit too thin, Jeff Bezos' ambitious project Kuiper is now facing a harsh reality. Delays, bottlenecks, and rockets that just aren't ready. And while Blue Origin and ULA struggle to keep up, there's one rocket launching like clockwork, SpaceX's Falcon 9. Fast, reliable, and already battle-tested, it might be the only option left to keep Kuiper on track. In today's TechMap video, we're diving into why Amazon may have no choice but to lean harder on Elon Musk's rockets, and whether Falcon 9 is the only lifeline left to make Kuiper a success. Project Kuiper is Amazon's ambitious $10 billion plan to build a low-Earth orbit satellite network that goes head-to-head -head with SpaceX's Starlink. The goal? To bring fast, reliable internet access to communities and customers all over the world. Amazon is working toward a constellation of 3,232 satellites, with 1,618 of them needing to be in orbit by July 2026 to meet FCC guidelines. They're aiming to start rolling out consumer internet services by late 2025 or early 2026. That way, early users can begin accessing the service as more satellites are launched and the network grows. To stay on track, Amazon is moving fast, launching dozens of satellites at a time and securing over 80 rocket launches from various providers. Leading the pack is ULA with 47 launches, which includes nine Atlas V missions, most of which are already completed or scheduled, and 38 upcoming Vulcan launches. Next is Ariane Space with 18 Ariane 6 launches. Then there's Blue Origin's heavy lift rocket New Glenn, with 12 launches lined up and the option to add 15 more if needed. And finally, there are three Falcon 9 launches from SpaceX. Interestingly, SpaceX wasn't part of the initial launch plan, but due to tight schedules and delays with other rockets, Amazon brought them in for three missions. The launch campaign kicked off in April 2025. Since then, Kuiper has completed three missions. The first two using ULA's Atlas 551, and the third on July 16th, marking their first ever launch with a SpaceX Falcon 9. The second Falcon 9 launch is set for no earlier than Thursday, August 7th, with one final mission planned later this year. Anyway, if you loved this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers and we need you to get there. So here's the catch. With how things are progressing, can Amazon realistically meet the FCC's requirement of having 1,618 Kuiper satellites in orbit by July 2026? Honestly, the answer is probably no. They'll likely have to request an extension and even change their plan. And here's why. Looking at their launch strategy, Amazon has lined up a series of rocket launches that may not work in their favor. Most of them are with ULA, a launch provider known for delays and a growing backlog of high-priority military missions. On the other hand, SpaceX's Falcon 9, despite being incredibly reliable and frequently launched, is only contracted for three Kuiper launches. That's a small number considering how much they need to deploy. Take the second ULA launch of Kuiper satellites as an example. Originally scheduled for early June 2025, the mission was delayed several days due to bad weather, heavy rain, and strong winds at Cape Canaveral, pushed the launch to June 16th. That's understandable and out of anyone's control. But then on June 16th, just before liftoff, an engineering issue popped up, specifically an elevated purge temperature in the booster engine's gaseous nitrogen purge line. The issue couldn't be resolved in time, forcing another delay. ULA's CEO, Tori Bruno, later said it would need more evaluation before a new date could be set. 
The mission finally launched on June 23, successfully deploying its payload after both weather and technical setbacks were addressed. While that mission was eventually a success, the delay highlights a much bigger concern. Amazon needs a significant portion of those 47 ULA launches to happen before July 30, 2026, in order to meet the halfway mark of the Kuiper constellation, 1,618 satellites. The full constellation must be deployed by July 30, 2029. But hitting the 2026 milestone is going to be incredibly tough given ULA's current situation. They have a staggering backlog of over 70 missions. That's an enormous load for any launch provider. Out of those, nearly 24 are military launches for the Department of Defense and Space Force, which naturally take priority over commercial clients like Amazon. On top of that, there's still the delayed debut of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane, also dependent on ULA's Vulcan rocket. All these pressures make it hard for ULA to focus on Kuiper launches. Given the current rate of the priority given to national security missions, it's estimated that ULA may only be able to deliver one or two Kuiper missions over the next 12 months. And that's just not fast enough to meet Amazon's FCC deadline. However, ULA is expanding capacity by adding a second vertical integration facility at Cape Canaveral. This new facility will enable dual, simultaneous launch processing, significantly increasing the company's launch cadence. The first VIF will be designated for government launches, while the new one will be for commercial launches. One of ULA's main goals in 2025 is to significantly ramp up its launch cadence and start clearing a massive backlog of more than 70 missions, which includes a mix of high-priority national security missions and commercial contracts like Project Kuiper. Everything probably starts off with the first U.S. national security launch aboard the Vulcan Centaur rocket, USSF-106, for the U.S. Space Force. It began stacking and launch prep by mid-2025 and is currently targeting a mid-August launch. But ULA's improvements alone won't be enough. Over in Europe, Ariane Space is still in the early stages with its Ariane 6 rocket. So far, it's only launched twice. The debut mission in July 2024 and its first commercial launch in March 2025. A third flight is planned for August 2025. This slow rollout reflects the normal teething phase of any new heavy lift rocket, where teams are still optimizing systems and procedures. At the moment, Ariane Space is only managing a couple of launches per year. For 2025, they've planned around five Ariane 6 missions, mostly packed into the latter half of the year. Long term, the goal is to reach about 9 to 10 launches annually within the next few years. However, management has stressed that this will be a gradual ramp up, with 2025 focused on reliability and building operational confidence before pushing for higher frequency. There are still hurdles. Ariane 6's manufacturing lines and supply chains are recovering and scaling back up after years of delays across Europe's space sector. Each new mission plays a critical role in refining processes and proving that the system can support faster turnaround times. For Project Kuiper, Ariane Space is scheduled to handle 18 launches over roughly three years, most likely starting in 2026 or 2027. That means they'd need to deliver about six dedicated Kuiper missions per year, on top of their commitments to other institutional and commercial clients. That's a tight squeeze and everything would need to go perfectly. No major delays, no technical missteps, no unexpected downtime. In short, Ariana Space can meet Amazon's 18 launch goal, but only if it successfully scales Ariane six to nine or 10 launches in total per year by 2027. The next two years are absolutely crucial. The risk is real, but if the ramp up stays on track, the goal looks achievable. Back in the US, Blue Origin isn't faring much better. Its new Glenn rocket is now targeting a launch no earlier than August 15th. But as of July 28th, they were still stuck in module testing. That's got the space community wondering, 
When will the integrated test finally happen? Meanwhile, Amazon is moving full speed ahead with satellite production at its brand new facility in Kirkland, Washington. At full capacity, this factory can pump out up to five satellites per day. That's over 3,000 satellites projected from this single site in the coming years, meant to support the full rollout of the Kuiper constellation. Simply put, Amazon's production speed is outpacing what its current launch providers can keep up with. At this point, only Falcon 9 has the capacity to support Kuiper's aggressive launch needs. So it's looking increasingly likely that Amazon, and possibly even Blue Origin, will need to secure more Falcon 9 launches soon. Falcon 9 is launching like clockwork, about every 2.7 days, and as of August 2025, it has been launched 523 times in total, with an overall launch success rate of approximately 99.43%. Factor in its relatively low cost, and it becomes clear why Bezos and his team may lean on SpaceX despite the rivalry. Falcon 9 currently costs around $62 million per launch, much cheaper than ULA's new Vulcan Centaur, which starts at roughly $110 million. And with New Glenn still grounded, Amazon doesn't have time to wait. In fact, there was even a rumor a few years ago that Amazon considered buying ULA outright, a move that would have secured long-term access to Atlas V and Vulcan rockets. But with a two-plus billion dollar price tag, that idea was shelved, pushing Amazon to depend more heavily on SpaceX and other partners. Anyway, if that's the case, I can't help but wonder, will Amazon keep requesting brand new Falcon 9 boosters for each Kuiper launch? So far, both of the initial missions flew on fresh rockets, and the upcoming one is set to do the same. It kind of makes you think, are they doing this to intentionally raise costs? Maybe to justify bigger budgets to investors? Or, if I'm putting on my tinfoil hat for a second, maybe it's all part of a strategy to make Falcon launches look more expensive to other partners, just to validate why they didn't go with SpaceX in the first place. So, after all, will Amazon end up buying even more Falcon 9 launches in the coming years? Let us know what you think. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Under the pressure of Amazon's shareholders, I bet that the answer is definitely yes. Of course, Amazon wouldn't have an excuse to ask for a whole new booster anymore. Just two years ago, the Cleveland Bakers and Teamsters Pension Fund sued Amazon that it didn't meet its fiduciary responsibility to its shareholders when assessing companies for its launch contract of Kuiper satellites. While four companies were looked at for the contract, one major company was left out. SpaceX. CB&T believes that, since SpaceX is the cheapest and biggest commercial launcher currently on the market, it should have at least been considered. In 2022, Amazon announced contracts with Blue Origin, ULA, and Ariane Space for a combined 83 launches of its LEO constellation, Kuiper Satellites. In 2020, when Bezos was still CEO of Amazon, Discussions were underway with several companies, Blue Origin being one of them, for a launch contract. However, Amazon told its own audit committee that SpaceX was not in the mix. CB&T claimed that Amazon never considered SpaceX for the launch at all, and points towards the long rivalry between the two companies' founders.